lightning wizards. Okay, in this uh, first tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to sharpen an image effectively in Lightroom 5. Um, different ways to sharpen, we can use brushes, but for the, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to look just at the detail slider or section here in Lightroom. So I have an image here, a uh, wintertime image taken in Whitehorse Yukon, and we're going to just take a look at how I would go about sharpening this. So I'm going to go into the sharpening area here. Now, one of the first things that jumps to mind when I look at any sort of image is kind of what needs to be sharpened. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is thinking that they have to sharpen an entire image. Really, what you want to sharpen in an image is the areas, the, I mean, the edges. Things like in this image, for example, I think I'd want to sharpen the branches, maybe the edges of the clouds, uh, the edges of this nice uh, sunburst right here, lines like this, but stuff like the water and the uh, blue sky here, there's not really any purpose in sharpening that. And in fact, if I sharpen it unnecessarily, it's just going to um, lead to kind of a to an image of lesser quality because you're going to kind of introduce art digital artifacts into the image that don't necessarily have to be there. Um, you don't need a sharpened sky. So let's just take a look at it here. So first of all, this little tool is really handy. Uh, this little tool allows you to kind of click and zoom in on a part of an image so you can see what's going to be sharpened. So if I click right here and just have my mouse, mouse around, uh, you'll notice that my little preview box there shows what's going to be sharpened. So I'm just going to take an area of branches here and I'm just going to click there which will lock it in. And now I can see what, whatever changes I make here, I'll, I'll be, be able to see in kind of a magnified state what's going to happen. So right here, now, kind of the first key slider here is the amount of sharpening you want to do. By default, I believe it's at 25. And if you crank that right up to 150, you, you notice it's going to do some pretty extreme sharpening. Now, one thing I'd caution against is over sharpening your image. Um, you want your images to pop but without looking fake or just if you go too far, you tend to notice it. It just, yeah, it looks a little bit on the fake side. So personally, the area that I generally stay in myself is kind of somewhere there in the middle, like anywhere from about 60 to 95. I mean, it all depends on what image you're doing specifically, but I'm going to go right about there. Let's just say about 80. Um, now the radius, the radius goes in between 0.5 right up to 3.0. This is basically how the radius of the pixels that are impacted by, by your change. Um, I find again 3.0 tends to be a little bit strong, um, so I tend to stick more just around kind of one pixel, uh, 1.0. Um, now the detail. This is where you can really go overboard. I find when people hit detail 100%. Let me just zoom in here on the image and see if you can tell. That's where I find you really kind of notice that uh, um, digital artifacts coming out within your image. Let me just kind of recenter this to see if you can see that better. Um, with that detail down, I mean it doesn't pop as much, but I find it's a fine line be between sharpening and just looking overboard or perhaps on the fake side. So with the detail, I tend to keep it somewhere around 50 generally. Now one of my favorite tools in, with sharpening in Lightroom is this masking slider. Now this masking slider, if you just kind of move it left and right, you don't really notice anything dramatically happening to your eyes. Uh, kind of the power in using this tool is holding down the option on a Mac or an Alt key while using it. Basically what this does is it allows you to see what's being sharpened. Uh, remember at the start I kind of said that not everything needs to be sharpened in an image. So if I hold down my option key here and click on masking, you notice that everything turns to white. Basically what this is doing is everything that's in white is what's being sharpened. Everything that's in black is not being sharpened. So right here with my mask set to zero, the whole image is being sharpened at 81. Now if I slide the slider though, you're going to notice that 
some of the image turns to black. So now all of a sudden, I'm not sharpening everything. The black areas in my image, again, are not being sharpened. So if I just kind of go a little bit farther here, again, you're going to notice, okay, so the black area increases. Now you notice that just the branches, kind of the edges of the clouds, and the sun, and the edge of the shoreline there are being sharpened. But I could probably even push that farther. Um, I really just want the, the strong lines in this image to really pop, to be sharpened. So I'm going to pull that masking way over to about here, 87. So what this does is that now it means that all those black areas are not being touched at all. So I don't have to risk kind of degrading my file, I kind of have that digital artifact slash noise looking stuff come out. Uh, I can just keep it right here and know that just my edges are going to be sharpened. So if I let go of my Alt key uh, or Option key, now it comes back. And so now my uh, image has been sharpened, but if I look back here into the clouds and everything else, nothing looks fake. I mean, it doesn't have that kind of digital feeling to it. Um, just the edges of my branches, the sun, the shoreline, have been nicely sharpened and now that image to me just has that little bit of extra pop without it looking fake. Thank you.